Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Google Net inception block in TensorFlow and Keras. If you do want to see it in PyTorch, if you check the video description, there may be one on PyTorch out. If not, it's just not out yet. And for this video, I'm not going to show all of the other code for building the data set and actually training the model. If you do want to see a whole notebook that does that, then go ahead and check the video description and check out that collab notebook. I'm just going to make one here which does only the model. Now we're only going to do the inception block because the actual network is really really tricky and I don't think it's a good use of time to code up the entire network. Basically it is made up of many of these inception blocks and that is the core architecture, the core innovation that was made in this paper. So to do that we are definitely going to use the Kira's uh, functional API because doing just the sequential it would be pretty much impossible. It is a weird combination of different uh, filter sizes and convolution sizes. So basically here we have the previous layer and then we do some amount of one by one convolutions then also we have some amount of one by one convolutions followed by some amount of three by three convolutions over here we have one by one followed by some five by fives over here we have max pooling with then one by ones and then basically you just stack up all of those outputs and these are all got to be the same height and width and so anytime you do some sort of uh, downsampling like here three by three would technically downsample the height and weight we're going to use a padding of same so that it's the same height and width as this previous layer here and we're going to do padding on that max pooling so that again all the height and width is actually going to be exactly the same here and then you can concatenate all of those different things that happened so that basically you have a variety of different things that happened in the convolution instead of just picking some sort of convolution uh, filter size and sliding that across and being stuck with whatever that outputted here you're getting a variety of things and you can get however many depth you want of each of these you can always pick the amount of filters you want for each of these so that when we can cat them you have a, a big variety of things that happened there and it's supposed to pick up on multiple patterns and there's also a reason for uh, computational efficiency why you'd want to use the 1v1s as well. Okay, so we're going to do most of this in a function that returns a block. Again, this could be done as a class. You could do an inception layer class or an inception model class. That's totally fine too. Here, it's actually okay just to make a function that's going to be similar to the one if you watch the video on how to make VGGNet. If not, that's okay. Um, but we're going to basically just keep changing x in the function API and we'll see that shortly. So we're going to define inception module. It's going to get basically one block or module of inception and it's going to take x which at first is just the input like the images and then if you use multiple of these module things you could basically just keep updating x and it's going to keep updating your module so that eventually x would be your final output of the model. Uh, we do x and then base channels so basically the depth of each of those things that we saw the depth of each of these, how many filters you have here, how many filters you have here, here, all of these things. I'm just going to make that equal to base channels and then we can multiply that base channels to say how many you want in each of them and we'll see that. And we'll set the default to be say 32. Now I'm going to break this apart into different pieces. So I'm gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this part B and so this will be B1, B2, this will be C1, C2 and this will be D1, D2. So that after that we just combine A, B2, C2, and D2. If we concatenate that and put it all together, that's basically what this thing does. So if we go ahead and make A, well that, as we saw, I'm not going to keep flipping back to the picture, but it is a conf2d of some amount of base channels, whatever depth that you want. Here we're going to do times two. There's actually a big variation in, in how those things work, but it doesn't matter how much depth you want base channels times two, and then one and one. So that's a one by one convolution with a stride of one. It doesn't do any downsampling because it's a one by one with a stride of one. And so we don't have to do padding equals same here. Uh, we can go ahead and do an activation of ReLU and we can pass that onto X so that we keep building this X thing up. Then what we do is B1, by the way, I forgot, sorry, we really should be importing these layers, otherwise it's not going to work, from tensorflow.kiras.layers import star, and from tensorflow.kiras.models import model. We'll use that at the end. So sorry, now conf2d is actually a thing. 
and we'll do B. So B is comprised of B1 and B2. This is one by ones followed by three by threes. Here you don't have to do any padding and here you do have to do padding. So we will do B1 is equal to conv 2D of base channels. Here we'll do base channels times four. So more of these than the A ones, base channels times four, and then one by one. So it starts off with a one by one convolution, pretty similar to here, but we'll do a little bit more. Uh, and then immediately here, we will do an activation equal to ReLU. And you could optionally play around with how often you want to do the activations, maybe the batch norms, um, but here we'll just do activation ReLU every time. I believe that's what they do as well. And we will pass that on to X. So here you can see as the functional API is working, you have your input uh, layer X here. And so we'll get A is attached to X, and we'll also get B is attached to X as well. Then we could do B2, the second part of B is a three by three, and so it's a conv 2D of base channels. We'll again just do times four. You don't have to have that the same as this because the depth is again arbitrary in a convolution, but we'll match that and we'll do three. So a height and width of three here, three by three and a stride of one. And here, since this does a down sampling, you would have to do a padding equals same so that we don't lose the height and width so that you can concatenate it. And again, we'll just do an activation ReLU and this time not of X, this is going to follow B1, so B1 there. If we look at C, C is going to be a one by one, pretty much the same thing, so we should be able to copy paste that and adjust the base channels if we want. And then after that, it's a five by five with a stride of one. So here we can do C1 is equal to a conv 2D of, we'll just do base channels. We'll get less of these ones. Again, you can play around with this as much as you want. And it doesn't even have to be perfect multiples of base channels, although that works quite well. Base channels and then a one by one and an activation equal to ReLU. That's gonna be of X. So literally the same thing as B1 here, except we're choosing a different number of filters. Then we could do C2 is equal to a conv 2D of base channels and then a five by one. So they have a five by five and stride of one. So that's that. And we can also have padding equal to same because that five by five is going to significantly reduce the height and width. And so we have to pad that up beforehand. And we will just do as always an activation equal to ReLU. And that's going to follow C1. For D1, it's ever so slightly different. We do a max pooling in a three by three with a stride of one, and we are going to pad that up so that we don't actually lose anything again. D1 is equal to a max max pooling to, sorry, to D, where it's a three by three and it's a stride of one. We definitely have to pad that up to make sure it's the same. And that's gonna follow X. And then after that, we have a one by one convolution, however many base channels that you want. Here we are going to do just base channels. D2 is equal to a conv 2D of base channels, and then a one by one with an activation equal to ReLU, and then that follows D1. Now that we have all these different pieces, we only care about A, B2, C2, and D2, because we've already done stuff from B1, we did B2, and from C1, we did C2, and D1, we did D2. So just with those four pieces there, we're just gonna return, so this function not returning the entire model, it's gonna return the block or our module, which is the concatenate. We'll concatenate on axis equals minus one, because that's in TensorFlow, the depth is the last channel. So on axis minus one, we are going to just pass in here the list of A and then concatenate B2 with C2 and D2. And that's our list there. We don't have to do any other syntax there, that's it. And then here to make the model, we just do input is an input of 224 by 224 by three. And that is the standard uh, height and width for ImageNet. And this channel is three. That could of course be adjusted uh, depending on what you wanted to create. And then we'll just call this thing maps. It's just like feature maps. So the concatenated output is an inception module. Module, I always have struggle typing that. Module of input 
so that follows and since we passed in here the input that goes into x and so it's going to automatically update x since we have that in there and it concatenates them so that if we do a global average pooling global average pooling 2d of the maps that should then be equal to just the dimension of however many filters that we have which is the combination of base channels times two plus base channels times four plus base channels plus base channels because global average pooling gets rid of all of the height and width and just averages over each of those squares so that if we get our output which is whatever you want it to be and we don't necessarily have to do an output here here is where you would stack multiple inception blocks and we'll do that in a moment but we'll do output is equal to the dense of one with uh, for the other ones I was doing, I was doing a sigmoid problem or a cat versus dog problem. You could, of course, make this output whatever you want. And that follows the global average pooling. And then we'll make our model equal to the model of inputs is the imp and outputs is equal to the output. And we should see a model dot summary. And it's going to take a second to build that. So here we have our input. We do the one convolution the max pooling. You can see the order is kind of weird because why is it showing the max pooling here even though we actually do it way after here? That's because it's kind of all doing it at the same time and I wouldn't worry too much about this picture here. Basically you should see here the concatenate of 224 by 224 by 25, uh, sorry 256. 256 should make sense. We should be able to do that math because the default was 32. That's what we used. So it should be, the depth should be 64. And then this is 128, that's the same here. So 64 and 128 and 32 and 32. We should see, I'll just pull up a calculator quickly to make sure that makes sense. If we do, sorry, 60, 64 plus 128 plus 32 plus, plus 32, sorry, that's 31, but I'll do plus one, is 256. Okay, so that's exactly what we expected. The concatenation of all of those, that gets us to here. Sorry, that gets us to here. And then we do a global average pooling to average across those. You really wouldn't do this in practice. So just know that if you're watching me here, don't actually do this because you're averaging over way too big of an amount. I'm just trying to turn this thing into a model for fun. Um, and so that you can see here, you could map an input to an output with just an inception block. Uh, I do want to show you that this thing, we created this nice function here so that you could create multiple inception blocks. And so we'll say here instead, maps one is inception module of the input, but then say maps two. So just pass that the uh, output of the maps one into there, and it's going to do the same thing. But we could change the base channels as well. And so you could say uh, base channels is equal to say 16 instead, a little bit smaller. And it's going to keep the same height and width. And so the average pooling that follows after we put maps to there, uh, it's still going to be kind of absurd. But just to show you that this creates a totally valid model, you should see concatenate one gets us down again to 256. That shouldn't have changed. But then we do all that stuff again. Another inception module, it keeps the same height and width, but it gets us down to 128. And then if you pool, again, that leaves us 128. We'll do a dense, and that gets us to just one of them. Okay, so you could make however many of those inception modules you want. You could add in some pooling in the middle here. You should be adding some methods of downsampling so that you aren't stuck with 224 by 224 and then you just have to average or flatten that. You could easily just do some normal convolutions to reduce the height and width or some pooling or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how you would code the inception block. Uh, and there's you can see there's a little bit of variety into how you can create it. If you do something like uh, this number here, and then they're all multiples of that. Or if you wanted, you can just do, uh, you could have a parameter for all of these different things and you could adjust all of them. And these don't have to be the same. This could be base channels times two, and that could be base channels times four. The depth really doesn't matter there. 
And there you go. I hope that was interesting. Drop a like if you found it helpful. And if you want to see, uh, if you want how to create like a full model out of this, it's not really a good model, but if you want to, I'll leave that full code in the description of the video. Since I actually did this thing with the maps too as well, showing you can make multiple blocks, I'll actually leave this one in the description as well. And yeah, have a great day guys. Bye-bye.